Aloha, everyone. This is Karen Welsh, and I want to welcome you to the Prophetic Oasis YouTube channel. Linda Carroll and I are here to encourage and uplift, bless, teach, inspire, whatever God gives us from his word, whether it's written in the Bible or he downloads it to us. We're so excited to be able to bring that to you. The only competition I have around here are the Koki Frogs. They're chirping very loudly tonight, so if you hear that little chirp in the background, those aren't birds. Those are actually frogs that come out at night, and they are very, very loud. And tonight, they seem to be very, very happy. And I love that. It's a part of God's creation and a part of his story, so we'll accept the frogs in this. But today, as I was thinking what I could bring to you, I was thinking about the concept of being good. My whole life, I was told to be a good little girl, and I know my brother was told to be a good little boy, and we were always told to be good little children. And every Christmas, we'd sing, be good for goodness sake, and everything was about being good. And being good is good, but I think that the concept of being good is a counterfeit to what God wants us to be, because he wants us to be way more than good. He doesn't want us to be deceived that our behavior and the way we modify it can be superseding to what we need. And the reason I bring that up is because the Bible says all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God, that we were all dead in our sins and our trespasses, and we are made alive in Christ. And so I was thinking about this deception that comes when we define sin as bad behavior. Because when we define salvation as good behavior, then we tend to work on that behavior modification, following all the rules and regulations and, you know, just being obedient to all of those around us. And that brings on this delusion that we are being good enough. It's just like Adam and Eve when they took the fruit from the garden in the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Satan at that point, when he deceived them, they knew the difference between good and evil. And that really did us the most harm when they took of that fruit. When Adam and Eve partook of that fruit, they gained something really toxic and counterfeit. And it kind of got spread to all of humanity because it kind of made us our own power source. We, we plug into ourselves. We rely on ourselves. And that means that we have become unplugged from God. And he is our true power source. So as long as we define what is good or right in our own eyes, then if we feel like we're living up to some measure of good, then and we're relying on our own selves for our salvation. We may need to think about God in all of this, what he did, because the truth is Jesus didn't come so that we could be good, so that he could make people good. He came to give us life and give it more abundantly. He came to give us eternal life. He came to redeem us. And that's it. That's the end of the story, period. Fanata. So it's not the message of the church to tell people to be good. It's to stop us from being our own power source, to stop relying on ourselves and making our own judgments about what that means. Because you could be the most religious person, just fasting and praying all the time, bowing, getting up at 4 a.m., getting in your prayer closet, staying up late at night praying for everybody. And you could be so zealous about that. Or you could be the homeless person that's in the downtown area that's sleeping on the sidewalk and trying to get enough money together to buy some drugs or some alcohol. That's both ends of the spectrum and everything in between. But that's how Satan brings hell to this world. And I don't know if anyone realizes that. We start hearing people demanding their rights and ways over the word of God. And they talk with no discernment, they become wrong thinkers, and they feel like they don't need to attend church on a regular basis because I can be my own church. I can modify my own behavior. I can be accountable for what I do. And we miss all of that. And I think that is conducive to making us complainers, accusers, gossipers, backbiters. It gives us this religious spirit. And I think about it all in the same way. As Graham Cook put it so beautifully, this is the worship language of hell because our focus is on ourselves, our will, our way, our truth, our life, and it is empty and hollow and dead. So we got to start thinking beyond ourselves. We got to start thinking what God wants for us, what he has in store for us, because it's so easy to become the woman at the well in Samaria with a life of hopeless chaos. 
brought by unsubmission to God's will and his plan for our lives. But Jesus is offering us more. He is offering us everything. He wants us to accept his invitation to be our groom. He wants us to say, I do to him. The only thing that he asks is that we trust him as our Lord and Savior, make him the one and the only source in our life. Not sex, not lies, not deception, which binds us and hinders us and leads to misery and death. The proud recipients of his life, which through the power of the Holy Spirit, it leads us into the path of righteousness. Isn't that where you want to be? Because that's joy and peace, patience and long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, and the ability to discern God's will for our lives. Because we're plugged in to God, we have the Holy Spirit, and he's communing with us, and he's talking to us. Again, it's just like the woman at the well. God gives us rivers of living water, and he just says, receive it, contain it, broadcast it, ask Jesus to show himself anew. Ask, seek, and knock. I know Linda talks about that all the time when she's giving her prophetic words. And I think those three words, ask, seek, knock, are so important because it's waiting right there for you. So I would encourage you to read God's word, which is 100% accurate and true from both the beginning and the end. It is a lamp to your feet and a light to your path. Are you having trouble with that? Do you doubt the authority of scripture? Say, Lord, I believe, help my unbelief. This perfect submission will help you breathe and live the true meaning of life. So let's quit circling around our sins and around what we think is right and our behavior and how we can present a good face to everybody when we're doing things that we know in private we shouldn't be doing. And let's just simply step into Jesus, submit to his gravity and his orbit, and let's flow around his sun and reflect his light. You know, it's rather effortless when you submit, when you say, God, I'm not good enough. I'll never be good enough. There's not anything I can do in this world to be good enough. But when I live in Christ, I am a new creation. When I live in Christ, I have so much. Jesus has given us so much. He's made us warriors. He's made us more than conquerors. He's made us debt-free. He's made us sin-free. And Dear ones, don't walk around like you're just a sinner once you trust Christ. Say, you know, I've got some sin habits, but God is doing a work in me. And as you get closer to him more and more, guess what? Those habits get broken. They diminish. They become less and less because when you're more like Jesus, you're less like who you were before you had him. Does that make sense to you? So I just want to talk about the opportunity to develop a brand new identity because Jesus, when he came, he came to kill off all that good for goodness sake, all that pretending, all that pretense. He came to take that away because he wants to be in relationship with you. He wants to be in relationship with me. And, and he gave us a helper in the Holy Spirit that will lead us into this new truth, into his goodness, into his newness of life that he has prepared for you and me. And we rely on the Holy Spirit to bring us there. And I just think this is such a great truth for us. You might say, I, I can't go to church there's a bunch of hypocrites there. Well, yes, there probably are. And you would be one of them. But guess what? You can't dwell on other people's circumstances or even your own circumstances because you got to quit dragging that person around with you. You got to quit dragging the old life around with you because God's not working on that. God's not working on behavior modification. He's not working on making you good for goodness sake. He want to have you completely transformed into his image through his son, Jesus Christ. And if you get into the scripture and you just start reading about all he's done for you and all he's going to do for you, and you start absorbing that, that God has redeemed you, then you understand that you don't have to deal with negative emotions. You don't have to deal with being anxious or sad or depressed. And, you know, we do go through hard times, but we don't have to live there. We don't have to dwell on those things because guess what? Those old things have passed away. And anytime you're stuck in those emotions, 
It's because you're not plugged into God, the ultimate power source. He will give you a better thought. He will give you a better way. He doesn't want us dealing with our negativity. He doesn't want us dealing with life's problems, but he wants us to deal with possibilities. He wants us to deal with everything that he has for us. And dear ones, he has heaven loaded down with amazing things for us. And Linda's talked about this many times. He has a storehouse just full of upgrades for us. He wants to drop them and deliver them. He wants to parachute them down on a moment by moment basis. But often we're not looking up. We're not seeing what he wants to do. We're not face to face with him. We're, we're just so absorbed and have tunnel vision in what we want. So I want to really just encourage you today to grasp that freedom. This is something you can offer yourself. Offer yourself to the ways of God and a freedom that never fails and never quits. It never peters out. It never put puts along. Don't let sin tell you what to do anymore. Don't let it have control of your life. Don't let it have a priority. Don't let it be so consuming because, you know, sin becomes consuming when we're trying so hard to fight against it and to war against it and all of that. We're just always trying to modify our behavior, modify our behavior, modify our behavior. When God's saying, let go and let me transform you. Let me give you everything that I have for you. And then you can be totally set free. And then you'll find yourself at peace. You'll find yourself at rest. You'll find yourself living in joy and happiness. Lose sight of yourself. Don't lose sight of God. Don't be one of those that's unstable and double-minded. Don't keep making a mess out of your life. So trust Christ all the way. God wants to talk you out of plugging your power cord into yourself. He says, take it, plug it into me. That's what I want for you. I am going to give you a better way to feel and react and be. I have such absolute goodness. I am absolute goodness, God says. And I want you to experience my absolute goodness, my absolute righteousness and I want you to be so unfocused on yourself that you bring the good news of Jesus Christ to the rest of the world, to the afflicted, to the needy, to the helpless, to the righteous. And you know the ones that are righteous, that are living with a religious spirit, that believe if they dot all their I's and cross all their T's that they're doing great. But you know deep down, you know when they're not in front of you that they're not that way. So I want you to be authentic. Get rid of that false identity that is wrapped in performance, that is wrapped in laws, that is wrapped in legalism, that is wrapped in I've got to do this, 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 and this in order to achieve and perform and I'm going to run myself ragged. And don't buy into that legalistic clap track that Jesus is wonderful, but you are rubbish because that is the furthest thing from the truth. Show the world what a true believer is. Show them what love looks like. Remember how I said before, God doesn't love. He is love. Love exudes from God 24-7, 365 throughout all eternity. It pours out of every one of his pores. He is love. He is pure, unadulterated, a million percent, billion, trillion, quadrillion, infinity is my grandkids would say love and we want people to experience this love we want them to experience god that we want them to encounter god's love believe it or not it's in your christian dna to be loved by god in such a radical way and as believers you may not feel this way but we have a right to be loved by god because of what Jesus did on the cross when he died for our sins. Isn't that a radical thing to think about? It is our right to be loved by God in the way Jesus is loved by him. And everything else falls away because everything flows out of God's love. It flows out. It's like that river that keeps flowing. And you should be feeling his kiss and his breath and his touch and presence in every aspect of your life. It is real and tangible. And if you should have any expectation of it and you're not feeling it, then you need to reassess if you know the Savior. You need to reassess your relationship with the creator of the universe. Because if you're living an old, downtrodden, 
obsolete life, failing, discouraged, depressed. I'm not saying we don't go through things in this life because life is difficult. But if that's the place that you live each and every moment of each and every day, then change because Jesus is a better way. He offers a better truth and he offers a better life because Jesus is the better choice. So don't just try and change your behavior and be good for goodness sake. It has never worked for anyone on this earth. So trust him. Discover who you are in Christ and behave accordingly. Read the word. See what it means to be in Christ. See what it means to be that new creation where all the old things have passed away. It's not just words on a page. It's the truth. All old things have passed away and behold, now everything has become new. Colossians 3, 9 through 10 says, don't take your cues from earth. This is not our home. It has no say in our life. Your thoughts and feelings and emotions should come out of the kingdom and the kingdom should not be coming out of how good you feel on certain days. We are in dire need of a great awakening, dear ones. So many of us have lived a secular existence and then bam, this COVID-19 hit and lockdown and quarantine and we're stuck. We're stuck in our path and we can't go any further. But God's saying, I have something I want you to embrace. It's not of this earth because everything on this earth can be broken. Everything except for God's love and God in our lives. But we as believers are partakers in his kingdom. Talk about power. When we walk with God, we are in the majority. Even if it's just you, even if you are the one, you are still in the majority when you walk with God. And God wants us to discard any of the false things we've had in our life, including potentially doctrines, theology, and especially traditions that don't line up with heaven because everything has to be on earth as it is in heaven. And you have to ask yourself, is this what is in heaven? God wants to set things right. He wants us to set things right with him. He wants to open the doors. And that same moment that you open the doors to God, you'll see that he's already thrown open his doors wide to you. And then you'll see yourself standing where you always hoped you might stand, out in the wide open spaces of God's grace, where you'll be saying glory, hallelujah, and shouting his praise. Can you imagine that? That's where I want to live. How about you? Thank you for joining us today on Prophetic Oasis. This is Karen Welsh, and I'm going to sign off and say aloha from Linda Carroll and I. And we hope that you, no, we don't hope, we pray that you join us tomorrow for some more encouraging and in-depth words because God wants to set you free. And that's really good. Aloha.